guys, Princess Sarissa here, and I'm back with uh, our party. We had uh, just defeated Omega, and now we're ready to continue on with our journey deeper into the interdimensional rift. So we're going to go over here, and we're going to open the book that we fought uh, a panda in. Not a panda like you see in the zoo, but a panda, the book of demon. And uh, that opens the way forward to this floating castle. Now, if you were a thief, you'd be able to see the hidden bridges here. But we don't have a thief, so... We're just gonna have to make do, but it's pretty obvious where you're gonna have to have to go. So, uh, in this room here, we're gonna meet uh, two new enemies. You mainly just fight dragons and ninjas. Ooh, that sounds scary. Mm hmm. Dragons and ninjas, and they kind of can be kind of scary. So here we are, the dragons and the ninjas. So, uh. The dragons are really good because you can win those dragon fangs off them, which are really good for mixing abilities. We saw how they were good for the uh, dragon power, which uh, increased the level by 20. Then there was the dragon armor, which gave basically invulnerability to uh, all elements. So those were key in helping us win that battle against Omega. The ninja, uh, he can be kind of tough, uh, like you would expect from a ninja. He's really hard to hit. So even though it only looks like he has like 5,000 hit points there, he's really, really difficult to hit. So uh, unless you're using magic, uh, he's going to be avoiding a lot of your attacks. So, uh, yeah, uh, mainly if you have magic-based uh, members of your party, be sure to use uh, them because he has really good uh, that physical evasion there. I'm surprised that uh, Faris managed to um, hit him. Uh, most of the time, uh, whips aren't very, really accurate. She tends to miss a lot with uh, her whips. Then we want another dragon fang, so... And like I said, all you're going to fight in this area right here are the ninjas and the dragons. So, uh -huh. It won't be until the next area of minions where we run into a bunch of new different monsters. Uh -huh. And the next area we're going to be going into, I guess we can say it's Howl's Moving Castle, or Castle in the Sky. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's this castle that's just floating in the middle of nowhere, so, hmm, that's, uh, gonna be scary, and it is kind of scary, uh, as I mentioned in the video description, uh, we had that one major boss, Omega, in our last video, well, in this one, we're not gonna have one major boss, we're gonna have multiple minor bosses, mm hmm this is kind of like a, a mini boss gauntlet, if you think about it, uh, but luckily, uh, all the monsters kind of have a little trick to make them kind of easier, so here we get Thor's hammer. Luckily, we don't have to be worthy enough to uh, oh, pick up uh, Majolnor there. Mm -mm. Yep, anybody can. Well, not everybody can use it, but like Berserkers and stuff, uh, or the Freelancer class. Any class that can use hammers can use it. You know, no other special requirements. It's not to say the Marvel movies. And then we have Hermes sandals. Uh, they inflict, they uh, give your character the auto haste ability if you uh, equip them on them. So we'll uh, we'll do that. We'll put them on Faris there, make her fast, and then now we can hand down the elf cape to uh, Krill uh, because Faris don't really need the elf cape as much because she already is wearing that mirage vest, which gives her the free image. So uh, we ran into some sword dancers there. They're a new enemy, but we'll run into them next. Now, all those old men running around there, they're all mini-bosses. There's six of them, yep. We will fight them all. But first, we want to fight this guy down here. I want to fight him down here because uh, this guy actually, he blocks a save point. So with all these little bosses that we're going to be fighting in here, you want to have a little save point so that you can heal up at uh, like a cottage or save your game, just in case something goes wrong. Mm-hmm. And, uh, something does go wrong, minions. Not that one of these bosses beat me, but... Eh, I'll, I'll talk about it when we get to it. Yep. But, when you fight this guy, uh, you can lie to him and you won't fight him. Uh, but if you tell him the truth that you are the Crystal Bearers, he will fight you. And this guy's like the Blue Mage King. Uh, he casts most of the Blue Magics in the game, so it's a good place to learn Blue Magics if you haven't learned them yet. But he's kind of a pushover, uh, as long as you have the wall rings on, because he's just a magical type guy. And he will just, uh, you know, cast magic on you and 
Most of the time, they will be reflected back from point uh, 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 from your reflect rays on him. Also, he is weak to poison, so as you can see, what I'm doing here is uh, I am uh, mainly uh, casting poison uh, on all of us. And see, it's reflecting back on him four times. That's why it's doing so much damage. Uh, that's a similar strategy to use to Omega. You know, that's why I was bouncing it back four times on Omega. Not only just to, well, three times because. Uh, Lena didn't have the reflectoring equipped, but the more we bounce, the more times it bounces back, the more damage it's naturally going to do. Uh, also, with Omega, uh, I didn't really point out in the last episode, he has really high magic defense. Uh, so if you haven't fought Omega yet, and uh, you're probably not going to be able to penetrate his magic defense. The only thing he really penetrate magic-wise is that lightning, because he has that uh, weakness to it. So it reduces magic defense to that to zero so but other spells not gonna penetrate that his really hard hard magic defense so here you have a save point I um, kinda messed up so did a little off screen there I re re uh, saved my game and then restarted from that save and uh, kinda messed up on these guys here they start off usually with this really bad encircle ability which just removes your character from combat it's one of the abilities that uh, Omega had to remove your characters uh, so yeah not very fun that's one of the counters that it can use so whenever you hit it it could potentially counter with that uh, encircle that's why we never wanted Omega to, all count, to uh, counter which is the way we use that strategy now this guy if you deal the 6,000 damage to him he changes forms, and he changes into this Yura uh, Avis. And uh, that's why I messed up. Uh, I forgot to uh, I forgot to uh, have him change forms, so I wasn't able to show off this enemy. So I had to reset it from my old save point there. But that's why you save every time you get to a save point. And the reason I wasn't able to uh, in the my you know pre-recorded video uh, to do this was um, you'll see the way I'm gonna fight the next one. So, um, and it's actually, the way I'm going to fight him is, you can actually use this, it's kind of a glitch, you can use this, uh, glitch I'm going to show you, uh, actually you can even use it on the last boss, uh, to prevent, uh, him, uh, changing his second form. You can use it basically on any boss that has multiple forms. Because, uh, the multiple forms are part of the boss's, uh, AI script. Basically, the boss's script is saying, like, hey, when you lose, go down to zero hit points or below, uh, you're going to change into this form. Well, the way you can overwrite that uh, boss's script is uh, through the Berserk spell. Uh, so if you Berserk the guy in any way, such as uh, the Berserk spell, uh, there's a mixture uh, that you can use to cast Berserk. And another thing, the way that uh, I got a lucky drop was I got that power staff. The power staff has no attack power, but it automatically berserks whatever it hits. So what you can do is, and this is what I forgot to do, I forgot to take off the power staff. But this is how I started fighting the first few of these guys. I just hit him with the power staff. And now his AI script is just going to read attack, attack, attack. So, when he gets down to zero hit points, because his AI script is rewritten, he won't go into that change form. So, it's the one way you can uh, avoid all those, uh, the bird form or the dragon form of this guy. So, yeah, just hit him with the power staff or some berserk, and he will always stay as the uh, old man here. And uh, he's much easier, he only has 6,000 hit points, as opposed to the 1,500 that the, the floating snake form had. So... Yep, uh, that's the that's the way you can take these guys out easily, and that's the way I'll be taking out these final five. Um, a lot of them I'll probably off screen, uh, just because uh, you know the battle ain't too too special. But some of them I'm gonna have to fight because the battles are so consecutive that it look weird if I cut them all out. So there we go. You can come up here, fight this guy, and he was guarding some red slippers. That's a dance uh, equipment. Uh, it helps increase the chance that uh, your dancer will use the sword dance when you if you use a dancer they have uh, multiple dances and uh, rainbow dress are the same way uh, they have four different dances and uh, there's different equipment that increase the chance that they use the sword dance which is the best dance because it basically does like 
I think, uh, eight times as much damage as a normal attack. So, like the red shoes, the rainbow dress, uh, there's a helm, I believe, uh, or a, a, a hat that you can put on that, uh, basically increases the chance that when you use the dance command with your dancer, they will use the sword dance technique. So, but hey, we don't have to dance or so. We don't have to worry about it. Mm-mm. But we do have to worry about this eye. Yeah, if you stand in front of this eye, this eye comes out, and he pushes you into the other column, but this guy, I, he's a pushover. As long as you can float and have reflect wings on, he will never be able to hit you. Uh, basically, what he tries to do is he tries to use that 100 Gs on you. And what that'll do is it'll pull you down to the ground. And once you're on the ground, he just basically uses this massive Oath Shaker thing. So he'll basically be uh, healing himself as he's hurting you. And it's multi-targeting. So he can be really, really tough. However... If you're floating and have the wall rings equipped, you can just, uh, the 100 Gs will always be reflected back on him, and he'll never be able to pull you down to the ground. And as long as you're floating in the air, his AI script says, hey, if they're floating, cast this uh, 100 Gs. So he'll never, we'll never, we'll never, we'll always be floating in this battle because we uh, have the reflect ring, which reflects back that 100 G. So this guy's stuck in basically, uh, uh, as long as you're floating, initially floating, and have reflect rings on, uh, his AI is just stuck in this loop to pull you down to the ground, but he can't. Now if you're not floating, even if you have reflect rings, he'll just use that multi-targeting Earth Shaker spell, and uh, your reflect rings won't be able to reflect that because it's a multi-target spell. But, so yeah, just go into that battle floating, and with reflect rings, and he cannot hit you at all. So, yep, like I said, a lot of these bosses, they kind of have little gimmicks. Uh, and if you know the gimmick, uh, they're not too uh, hard to really uh, defeat. Because normally you think like, wow, I'm going to have to fight like, you know, nine potential mini-bosses. There's actually two more that we don't get to in this episode, but, you know, potentially like 11 mini-bosses in a row. Like, that's really crazy. But, like I said, they all have sort of a little gimmick that you can exploit, so I'm going to be pointing those out, minions. So, uh -huh. see, Princess Sarissa, she got you covered. Uh -huh. And speaking of princesses, I think there's a princess right up here. Purple-haired princess. Thank you, I've been locked down here for ages. Let me show you my appreciation. Oh, she gave, she gave, she gave Lena a smooch. Mm. I wonder if Lena had to give her five cents. Cause that's how much Marty was choosing for his kisses. Kisses five cents. Mm -hmm. My daddy has a shirt from Marty Mouse House that says "Kisses five cents" on it has Marty on it. Mm -hmm. But uh, y you know what's sad? Like my my daddy will go to like his Zumba class with that shirt on, and none of the girls will give him any kisses, even though they're only five cents. I guess I guess daddy's not very purty. Mm -hmm. And here we have Ramu, and uh, he's uh uh. He's that uh, extra summon that we could have met a long time ago back in History Falls. His stats haven't really changed at all since then, so he's really, really easy to take out right now. So basically, you know, two flare spells, and boom, he's done. And he has the same dialogue script where uh, he basically confronts Ifrit, and uh, Ifrit tells him, uh, you know, hey man, uh, hang out with me and the rest of these espers, and we get... Uh, we finally get our uh, next, uh, we get um, final uh, Esper magic. So remember, Ramu is an item, so you're gonna have to go into your item screen and select it, and then boom, you do that, and now we have filled up our Esper, uh, Esper magic. See, a free, uh, Ramu there in the middle of the, uh, or the is in the middle column, second row down. So there we go. And speaking of uh, summon magic. Uh, we still gotta get to that, uh, gole we gotta get to that golem from the magic lamp. So we're gonna use some summons here, uh, as we, uh, go through and fight these things. So, here we have two new enemies. We ran into the sword dancers earlier, but I cut that battle off because they're very common with this enemy here, the death claw. He kind of reminds me of that, uh, sergeant, uh, back in Karnak Castle, uh, and, uh, he uses the death claw just like that, uh, Bounty Hunter did there. Weak to water, uh, so we, luckily we were on the, uh, with the magic lamp, we were on the, uh, 
we were on the uh, Leviathan summon. So Leviathan came out and swept them all away. Sword dancers don't have any weakness. So unfortunately, Leviathan didn't take them out. But, uh, you know, otherwise they're not too, too difficult. They can be annoying, though, because they have a zombie spell. Uh, as you can see, they just turned Krill into a, into a zombie. And, uh, unfortunately, you have to use uh, Holy Water then to remove the zombie status. That's the only thing that can take that zombie status off, so. And, uh, unfortunately, Krill didn't get any experience there, but that's okay. Uh, Lena has mainly caught up into levels. Also, when we were fighting all those, like, old men who turned into the snakes, if you let them, uh, Whiskers managed to max out his chemist job. So now, every single one of our characters has maxed out all four of those jobs. So, yep, these are the jobs that they'll be in. Obviously, I won't change them anymore, and I've changed their secondary abilities. Now, there's a hidden passage in here, uh, somewhere. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm still trying to look for it here. And I've kept this enemy in here, uh, even though we just ran into them earlier, because, uh, we want to, uh, show off some of the different summons. Because we'll be using the magic lamp, uh, throughout, uh, to try to get down to that golem, because we have another optional super boss coming up, so. Then we have the, uh, Odin. He, if the enemies are weak to instant death, he will slice them in half. Which is weird, because Odin's known for his spear, the, uh, the Gugnir. But, uh, he, uh, for this game, Final Fantasy, he uses a sword. But he will use that Gugnir staff, uh... If uh, the enemy is strong against instant death, he'll just appear on horseback and throw the spear. Uh, deal single target damage. And we find another, the Man-Eater Knife, which is good for humanoid type monsters, like those dancers. Uh, you can use the knife on them to, to take off a bunch of their uh, hit points. Uh, it does extra damage to human type enemies. So, but we already have two good knives, the Chicken Knife and the Assassin Knife, so... Yeah, I'm just checking out the things here. Uh, it skips Phoenix because you have to have a character who knocked out for the Phoenix thing summoned to work. So, just looking at uh, how many more we need uh, to cast, how many more magic lamp uses we got to use until we uh, get down to that uh, golem. So here we have another new enemy, the Fury. Uh, so, yep, he's kind of annoying, but thankfully we have our... Uh, we have our uh, reflect rings on there because I just saw they use a lot of like instant death spells or spells that almost mimic instant death. Uh, death would obviously knock you out, uh, but that stop spell that reflected off of our uh, characters uh, that basically just stops your character for a certain amount of tur turns. And uh, you know that can be it's almost like death. Uh, it can actually be even worse than death because you know if you get knocked out you can. Next next character can use a, uh, a phoenix down on that person and have them revived up, ready to go, you know, in, a, in you know, less than a turn. But, uh, you know, if you're stopped, you're going to be stopped for quite a while. So, as you can see, Lena's still kind of stuck there. She's still paralyzed, so... It could take a, it could take a character out much longer than, uh, you know, just a simple, uh... A simple, uh... Uh, knockout, uh, death spell would, would do. So. Mm -hmm. so, I'm gonna take out this fury, and hey, now we've paralyzed him with the, with our whip. Where to go, Ferris? Mm hmm And her little sheep costume. Yeah, it's funny, all the, all the Beastmasters are all, they're always in little sheep costumes. Mm-hmm. So. Sadly, we didn't have a blue mage in this, uh, playthrough, but, uh, blue mages and the beast, uh, Master class go really good together because the beast master can control an enemy and then force the enemy to use their magic spells on the blue mage. Then the blue mage loans the spell, and uh, just it's a good way to boost up your blue mage's uh, ability. They have really good synergy together. Mm -hmm. And speaking of synergy, I, I think you and me, minions, I think we have really good synergy. So I'm going to ask you to continue to have that synergy with me and continue to watch. Uh, my uh, my videos and uh, if you keep doing that you'll see why uh, in a, just a few sec uh, next time why I'm going to end this video by turning all of my characters into toads yeah that that doesn't seem like makes a lot of sense because remember when you're a toad you're 
can't really do anything and you take a lot of damage, why would I be turning my characters into toads? Well, you'll just have to find out next time, minions. So, take care, have a good one, I'll see you then. Bye!